And I, I'm going to prove that to you because if you'll turn the Bible to 1 Corinthians, I'll prove just what I just said to be true. How many know Paul, the Apostle Paul, was an educated man? Yes. He was a Pharisee of Pharisee, taught by the best. Yes. Gamaliel was his teacher, his personal teacher. Uh -huh. And he came behind no man in any gift as far as the law was concerned. Yes. I mean, he knew the law backwards and forwards. And, and, and God honored that. Now let me tell you something you find in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. The men that Jesus chose was ordinary men, the 12 disciples. You all know that, right? Most of them, the majority of them, was fishermen. Amen? At least four, five, six, eight, you know, was fishermen, common men, tax collectors, and just... They, they didn't have a lot of wisdom of the work. Amen. Yes. They were hard-working businessmen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Fishing was a business. Yes. And when Jesus told Peter and his brother Andrew to follow him, he would make them fishing a million, they left their business. Yes. And then he went on a little further and saw the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and he said, follow me. And they immediately left their father with a business. Amen? Because they, they knew that somebody with some authority was speaking to them. Amen? You can tell when a person has authority by the way they carry themselves, by the way that they talk. They're not for a lot of foolishness. Amen? They're just straight to the point. And, and, and a lot of folk didn't like Jesus. A lot of educated folks didn't like because Jesus was an ordinary man that did not attend their schools. And there have been schools for preachers throughout the Bible, schools of prophets and schools, you know, to teach you this and teach you that, you know. But if God did if you haven't been to God school, amen, and if you haven't been anointed by the Holy Ghost, Amen. And if the Spirit of the Lord is not upon you to preach the gospel, then you're just wasting your time and mine. Yeah. I'm going to be honest and I'll be perfectly honest and I'll go home in about 10 minutes. Some preachers, y'all tell them, I said, I want to go from here to outside to here. I just want to waste my time. Because when you get a chance, this pulpit is sacred. And when you get a chance to stand behind this sacred desk, you ought to preach Jesus and Him crucified. You ought not preach racism. You ought not preach politics. Amen. You ought not preach the, what's going on in the world. You ought to preach the Word of God. That's why a lot of our churches are empty. Because we've been preaching that. Jesus. And that's the focal point. I'm going to prove it to you. A lot of us got a little education. A lot of us got so many degrees. We got more degrees than, more degrees than a thermometer. But that doesn't mean anything. If you don't have the anointing, because the anointing removes the birth and it destroys the young and grounds it to power. Praise God. I said praise God. Amen. Amen. And that's why when I stand, I don't stand. I'm a totally different man when I stand behind this desk. Because the anointing that comes upon me when I get up to preach, I could not carry that 24-7. My flesh couldn't handle it. Do y'all know what I mean? There's a special anointing to preach when it's time to preach. There's a special anointing to sing when it's time to sing. Amen. I don't care how pretty you sing. I don't care how many albums you cut. How much money you make. If you're not anointed, it doesn't move me. And you say, who are you? I'm a child of the most high God. That's who I am. And, and listen, one thing we need to learn to do is quit worrying.
worrying about folks judging us. God has always been that way, brothers and Folk got their favorites, and ain't nothing you can do about it. So, see, back in the church of Corinth, what I had to do, they was having the same problem. Some said, I'm a Paul. Some said, I'm a Apollos. In other words, I followed him. He taught me. Paul taught me Apollos. Some said, Cephas and Peter. But then the question was asked by the same man. He said, is Christ divided? Did Paul die for you? And that's what I want to ask for when they pick, they got their picks and they choose that. I ain't going because so and so ain't preaching. I will go if he's preaching the word. But if he's not, like I said, I won't go outside to hear him. And I'll stand and say that on the mountaintop. Amen? School has its place. And Paul found that out. Amen. On the road to the mess, let me just read this and I'm, I'm going to get out of your way. First Corinthians, the second chapter. The first and second verse read like this. Don't stand. Don't just stay seated. Amen. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Declaring to you the testimony of God. We can stop there and talk about the testimony of God. You mentioned the testimony of God. Folks don't even know where you're coming from. What is the testimony of God? That's a sermon itself. That's, man, that's a sermon, baby. I didn't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom. Because the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. I know we're celebrating the anniversary of man on the moon, 50 year anniversary of, of, of one, one step for man, the great giant step for mankind. And, and, and uh, for 50 years, I didn't believe they really went to the moon until I started watching documentaries and they broke it down. Peace by peace. I thought it was a Hollywood set. All these years, I really didn't believe it. And last week, I saw some things that changed my mind. Yes, men with the worldly wisdom have got the wisdom to go from earth to the moon and back. Yet when you preach Jesus, it's foolishness to them. They said, they said we are crazy for believing in a God that we can't see. I can't see the wind, but I know it exists. Have you ever seen the wind? You see the results of the wind. You see the damage that the wind can do, but you've never seen the wind. But how do you know it's this? Because I can feel it yes. when it blows the cool breeze across my face. Yes. How do you know God exists? I can feel every now and then. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every now and then. Yes. 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 Chuck my said, Chuck out fire. Some of y'all don't know that because you ain't never felt the fire. Oh, Jesus said, I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. Some of us said, we got the Holy Ghost, but the fire ain't burning. Oh, I don't want to have one without the other. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then, you, you, you ought to wait to handle something. Yeah. 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 Certainly, I'll like God owes you something, you know. Like you've been so good and you got this far on your own. Amen. I heard the old, the old choir way back in the day when they were marching. They said, every choir sung this one, 
There's somebody saved. You 
know what Jesus said? Those that are lost, I don't need nothing. Except the one that the devil had, he wasn't mine no way. So I feel the same way too. I ain't looking good, they weren't mine no way. They just were cheap. So be mine. <laughs> but listen, I, I gotta go now. I gotta go. I'm not coming to know nothing save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And if we'll preach Jesus and Him crucified, men everywhere will be saved. If we preach Jesus and Him crucified, men everywhere will get delivered. If we preach Jesus and Him crucified, men everywhere will be set free. If we preach Jesus, really preach Jesus and Him crucified, men and women will be healed. I was telling my wife on the way out here. A lot of folks, good folks, are sick. A lot of Christian folks, sick, been sick for years. What's with that? Now, Jesus said, by his stripes, you are healed. And then he said, you are healed. How come I'm not healed? I'll tell you why. We nullify. Everything that we pray for by speaking sickness on ourselves. Amen. If you think about it, don't know what well, I didn't do it. Yeah, you did. Oh. Oh, well, I'm sick. I oh, thought no, I just prayed for it. Oh. I'm, I'm sick. I've had this 40 years. I've had this 50 years. This is, not, this is in my family. That's it. Listen, you limit. Psalm 78, 41 says, and they limited the Holy One of Israel by that. We complain, but we want God to heal us. We backbite, but we want God to heal us. We gossip. It's so for, let me say, I'm going to come this is my God. If they got in the word, like they got in Facebook, if you put your faith in the book instead of being on Facebook, wouldn't it be a much better place to live? Get off Facebook. Don't nobody care where you went to dinner last night.
themselves and folk don't eat. Yeah. If they don't pray, they don't eat. Yeah. And don't mention no fast. Yeah. I don't know what you know about fast. I'm a feast. <laughs> and we wonder why God won't move. We can't push our pain away for one day and get on our knees in sincerity and call on the name of the Lord and God do something. I'm going to tell you something. The same God that delivered them, He's delivering the day. And if you ain't a part of that, it's not God's fault. Now I'm going home, God. The Bible said He brought them out of Egypt. That's why we need to preach to you. See, out of Jesus, the Bible said that rock that they drink out of. Over in Corinthians, it said that rock was Jesus. Amen. Moses had not been respected on Jesus. That's why he didn't even promise him. He smacked him. He smote him when God should speak to him. All right. Yes. Watch it, son. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Give me a key. That's too hard, bro. But listen, 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 I'm going home, y'all. Did you get anything tonight? Yeah. If you don't get nothing, remember Jesus yeah. and Him crucified. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. the Bible said when He brought them out of Egypt, on, they got a three day journey. Yeah. And they began to pray right. and to thank God. All right, then all of a sudden, they looked behind them and Pharaoh. Can change his mind. Pharaoh and his army was in fast pursuit of them. In that right, so they didn't have nowhere to go. Amen. But look how good God is. Pharaoh coming fast behind them. The mountains on either side of them. The Red Sea is in front of them. Boy, we got ourselves in a mind here. Nowhere to go. Every which way I turn, there's trouble on every side. But God, how do you know God is your salvation? On the center, God, what do you want me to do? God asked Moses, what's that? You got in your hand. Moses said, it's a rod. God said, stretch out. Your rod. Ain't God good. Moses stretched out his rod. And the Red Sea began to part. The Elohim said, 75 feet on one side. 75 feet on the other side. And they walked over on dry shelf. The soles of their shoes didn't even get money. Ain't God good? But soon they forgot about the Holy One of Israel. They forgot how He delivered them. And they were right. They got on out there, started crying. We ain't got no water. God called the rock to split in two. Called the water to shout like rivers. In the bed, the Bible said they complained they was hungry. God sent a manna from heaven. You know what it called manna? Said it was angel food. Manna is what the angels eat. And what the angels eat wasn't good enough for them. They wanted some meat. So God called the weed. Forget. The Bible said they remember.